It was the busy season on the Fat Controllers Railway. More coaches were added to the express to meet demand. Gordon had to work long into the night and start early in the morning. It soon became clear he needed help. The Fat Controller chose to take Murdoch off Good's work to help Gordon out. You're adaptable, the Fat Controller told him. Your strength should prove most useful with the Express. Murdoch was a strong engine, but he hadn't pulled passengers before. This made him a bit nervous. I'll try me best, sir, he promised. To the surprise of no one, there was one engine who wasn't pleased with the arrangements. It's just not fair, James whinged. We can't compete with... with... that. We aren't competing with anyone, Henry glared. Look at him, Henry. All 88 tons of him. Strong as an ox. We'll never pull the express again so long as he's around. Oh, get over yourself, James. If the VAT controller finds he's not the right engine for the job, fine. If he is, get used to it. You can, scoffed James. I don't give up without a fight. Soon, it was time for the express to leave. Murdoch backed down onto the coaches and waited with bated breath. Then, he dragged the heavy train out of the station and onto the main line. With the open track sprawled ahead of him, Murdoch began to feel better. <laughs> it's not so bad, he laughed, and began to go faster. The driver was pleased. Good engine, keep this up and we'll be there in no time. The passengers were happy too. One man on board was timing the journey. People on platforms held onto their hats as Murdoch whizzed by. In no time, Murdoch forgot he had been anxious at all. Come along, come along, come along, he sang to the coaches, picking up even more speed. We're coming along, we're coming along, we're coming along, they sang back as they raced through tunnels and thundered over bridges. When Murdoch puffed into the station at the end of the line, the engine from the other railway hadn't arrived. <gasps> You're early, gasped the station master, a bit flabbergasted to see him. The diesel isn't here yet. You'll have to wait. Murdoch didn't mind. He had been looking forward to a rest. His snooze was interrupted a while later by the spluttering of an engine. <coughs> Try to better take a look at that. <coughs> oh grief! How are you here already? Um, I'm not quite sure, chuckled Murdoch. Spam Cam glared red in the face. Oh, ha ha, de, ha ha, yes. I'm on to you, Spam Cam shouted, leaving with a racket. Murdoch laughed some more and clattered off to find a turntable. The run back to the big station went just as well. The passengers thanked Murdoch and left to catch their bus home. That was grand! <laughs> I can see why everyone's always wanting to go! As the crowd disappeared, Murdoch saw the fat controller standing at the end of the platform. He gestured towards himself. A word, Murdoch, if you have the time, he called. I hear you got on swimmingly with the express this morning, he started. He wasn't shouting. That somehow made Murdoch feel more uneasy. Uh, y y yes, sir. 
Tell me, do you know how fast you were going, perchance? No, sir. Never mind. A passenger of yours took the liberty of timing you. Enthusiasts are a wonderful thing. Ninety miles an hour by his timings, Murdoch was speechless. The signalmen have confirmed his reports, as does your extraordinary arrival time at the end of the line. You were supposed to keep to time, not break the sound barrier. Pardon me, sir, put in the driver. But we weren't trying to. Murdoch ran so smoothly we didn't notice. My point exactly. I cannot trust you to travel at safe speeds, Murdoch, when you clearly don't know your own limits. Consider your express career over. Now, go to your shed. Murdoch felt awful. I understand, sir. I'm sorry. News spread of Murdoch's meeting with the Fat Controller. The big engines discussed it in the sheds that night. Oh, such a promising express engine too. Oh, what a pity. Perhaps it's for the best. The Fat Controller is only looking out for everyone's safety. Still, Richard added, he only wanted to be really useful. Oh, well, James yawned from the corner of the shed. Some engines have it, some engines don't. Leaving with his heavy goods, he's a danger to the passengers. Do you have it, James? You'll see. The other engines rolled their eyes. They could see right through James. So could the fat controller. He chose Richard to help Gordon instead. The weeks passed, but James wasn't deterred. It's only a matter of time, he chortled. Then I'll show him. Then I'll show him. Meanwhile, Murdoch was back to pulling goods trains. He still enjoyed these runs, of course, and the peace and quiet. Even so, he couldn't stop thinking about how he had let the fat controller down. The fat controller was out of options. Richard needed maintenance due to his extra workload. Gordon was still being steamed. Henry was away with a flying kipper. Bear was pulling tankers. Boko was helping Donald and Douglas. It had come to this. <sighs> now, James. Now I've got a special job for you. The Express! Oh, thank you, sir. Took you long enough. Uh, you've made a fine decision, sir. A fine one. James. Uh, yeah, yes, sir. Go. And he did. James huffed into the big station, full of gusto. Make way for an Express engine, he whistled, coming to a stop at the platform. He waited and waited. The coaches didn't come. Oh, I guess I have to do everything myself. When he had arranged the coaches, James saw Murdoch shunting a long train of trucks for the end of the line. Goodbye, Murdoch, he boasted, blowing steam theatrically. Don't go too fast with those trucks, you hear? James scuttled away, cackling fit to burst. Ignore him, Murdoch's driver muttered. At least we're doing honest work. Let that showboat have his moment. James was determined to prove himself as an engine worthy of the express. That Murdoch hasn't the foggiest about passengers. I can make the time without being a liability. The longer the journey went on, the more tired James felt. He had reckoned without the extra coaches. Oh, phew, he panted. 
I don't remember the express being this heavy before, but I can manage. The driver was cautious. We're losing pressure. Pace yourself, James. We haven't even reached the workstation. I'm perfectly fine. And he tugged the coaches hard. Don't dawdle, don't dawdle. We aren't, we aren't. James's valves began hissing in an alarming way. Oh, that can't be good, the fireman grimaced. Let's stop at the next station to see what's the matter. That tipped James over the edge. Stop! I won't stop! I'll never get the express again if I do! Unfortunately, it wasn't James's choice to make. James juddered to a halt on a lonely leg of the line. That's that then. There's nothing for miles out here. We'll just have to wait for someone to come and get us. That wasn't what James wanted to hear. It felt like an eternity stuck helplessly on the main line. The passengers were anxious. All James could do was look at his buffers, feeling sorry for himself. He was soon snapped out of his trance when he heard the sound of an engine approaching. Hey, over here, help us, please. Good gracious, this is a fine how do you do. What happened, James? Uh, I had an accident, James ventured, choosing his words carefully. He was trying to prove how great he is. You've proven something anyway. James now felt awful about what he had said to Murdoch. Please, Murdoch, don't leave me out here. Murdoch wasn't sure. The fat controller had been very clear on the subject of him pulling the express. I'll go for help, he said, starting to leave. There's no time, James wailed. Everyone is busy. Who knows how long it'll be before someone gets here. You can do it, Murdoch. Uh, I'm not sure. The fat controller wouldn't he like it. The fat controller doesn't have to know. I won't tell him. Oh, please. Murdoch took a deep breath. He knew he couldn't leave the passengers stranded. Then, okay, let's do this. Murdoch quickly buffered up in front. Are you sure you can manage? asked his driver nervously. He'll give it a good go, Murdoch said bravely. We can't let the passengers doon. He could feel every coupling tighten as he willed the trucks, James and the Express into motion. Murdoch was careful not to go too fast. They were going well as they passed through Edward's station. Now for the ill, braced his driver. Do your best, old boy. Can I help? James hollered from the middle. Hey, you should just help me break at the top, Murdoch wished. With one last effort, the long train crested the hill. At last, the workstation was in sight. The little engine stared in amazement as Murdoch parked James and his coaches at the platform. The porter held onto his trolley for dear life as the passengers flooded out of the coaches. Some buses were called to take the passengers on while the shunter moved James to the workshop. Thank you, Murdoch. I'm sorry I was so rude. You're a first-rate engine. Murdoch didn't hear him. He had already left. After all, he still had a train to deliver. So kind of you to join us at last. Fifteen minutes late. I knew that last time was a fluke. You have the decency to show up at the very least. Can't say the same for the Express. <laughs> Murdoch was too tired to reply. He smiled knowingly. 
don't gird at me with that horrid face. It's bad enough being resigned to <laughs> trucks because of you lot, I might add. Move aside so I can take them and be rid of them. Murdoch watched Spamcam Oil out of sight back to the other railway. He trundled back home light engine and proud of his day's work. As he prepared his train the next afternoon, Murdoch noticed the fat controller walking across the yard towards him. His heart sank. Hello, Murdoch. Murdoch went red. Uh, 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 hello to you, sir. The other railway says their freight train was delayed yesterday. What happened? Murdoch gulped and racked his smoke box for an excuse. Um, yeah, well, uh, um, well, first there was a problem with the brakes on one of the wagons. Uh, yeah, I had to sort that out. Uh, yeah, and uh, um, a few cows wanted onto the lane. I got to stop for them, of course, and spare me the routine, the fat controller said. I received quite a lot of letters from the passengers. They asked me to send their regards to the orange engine who did such a splendid job with the express yesterday. Murdoch began to panic. I, I, I know what you said, sir, and I'm sorry. Um, I really am. I, I was only doing what I thought was... Uh, <coughs> <coughs> Murdoch went silent. While I have made up my mind regarding you and the Express, and that will not be changing, I can look past this this one time. Good work, Murdoch. You have been a really useful engine. Murdoch let out a sigh of relief. Oh, oh, thank you, sir. You're too kind. Just make sure the fat controller finished. You can find a happy medium between being too early and being late. Murdoch wholeheartedly agreed. <laughs>